Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's all working. Working right now. Looks good. Hey, hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy Thursday. How you doing out there? Thursday is my favorite days. we got Wine and Wealth coming up tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern for clients. It'll be live in the dojo. You know the drill. Uh, you'll get an email, too, I believe. I think some of you even get two emails from what we see. Maybe four emails. Sorry about that. We're working on it. Uh, anyways, it's in our uh, client portal. We do a live class every Thursday. And uh, this week, we're going to look at the buying power of your money when it comes to a house. We're going to look at the mortgages. We're going to look at your uh, payment. We're going to look at how many hours you got to work to have a down payment, 20%, 5%. How was it? How bad is it? Is it really that bad at all? We're going to show the difference there to put everything into perspective because there's still a lot of people, you know, they want to buy a house. And, you know, they're, they're getting kicked out. Or the rent's going up. They said, well, it's cheaper to buy a house. That still exists in places. So I want to make sure you guys are getting the best deal possible. Remember, we are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. We help with everything. We may be focused on investments day to day for you, but anything that comes up, we're happy to help. I just helped a client a minute ago who was like, hey, I, I own this house. I uh, lived in it for two years. I'm going to move into this other one now. So I have that two of five rule kick in. I'm never going to sell the property, but I'm going to move into this one. And I'm like, Wait a minute, I think you got the rule messed up there. So just a little bit of help there to uh, guide them back on track and allow them to go make better decisions with their dollars. I love it. I love it. And we're going to do that tonight. Uh, fin tips. Uh, today, I posted a video about a little 401k trick. Uh, for those of you that it doesn't apply to, it was just a matter of trying to teach you how to look at the tax code or any little things that come up in different things. What, what's your problem? What's the problem? It's not like, it's not bad. It's just not awesome. You don't like the audio? It's fine. It's just not It's awesome. not great. Wait, wait, closer? I mean, maybe. I don't know. All right. Sorry about that. I feel like I'm letting everybody down now. Uh, all right. So there's a FinTips video. You can check that one out there to learn, you know, to think deeper than just going, yeah, that doesn't apply to me, whatever. Uh, so hope you enjoy that one as well. Uh, well, hey, stock market today didn't start out so good, actually. It wasn't amazing. Uh, but uh, it was we had a lot of overnight news. There's actually, over the next two and a half weeks, there's going to be a lot of overnight news that could affect our stock market as well, which isn't too cool because we have earnings coming out as well. Uh, we didn't start so strong, but uh, obviously you can see we finished that way. Not too bad there. Japan lowered their GDP numbers, uh, which was a little bit of a shock. We knew a little bit. They kind of gave us a hint before they were going to do that. The ECB raised interest rates a half a basis point which um, that's a record for them, I believe. I, I don't recall them being able to do that. They did hint at that as well. So it wasn't like, you know, catch you out of, you know, left field sort of thing. I was trying to make a sports reference. It didn't work. I'll stay away from that. Uh, here in the U.S., we wake up this morning, we get jobless claims there a little bit higher. Uh, new orders drop. That's in the Philly Fed numbers. If you'd like to look through those details there, new orders for new equipment, new supplies, new products all drop. That wasn't really great news there. But uh uh, market badger don't care, right? Am I too old to say that? You remember uh, that? That was, that was just a few years ago. No, come on. Honey I badger? Was, yeah, was, uh, that might have been five. It could be old. Yeah, no. That's like saying sus. You don't, uh, No, we don't do sus. You don't say sus. We don't do honey badger don't care. That's fine. Uh, actually, the girl across the street, my neighbor, she told me. I said I was joking and trying to sound cool. And she's like, eh. <laughs> oh. You don't say sus. You know, you learn. Anyways, uh, let's take a look. If you like the S&P, let's take a look at what's going on here. It was higher by 1% on the day. Uh, you'll take it, right? A lot of help from the super duper cap growth stocks. I'm trying to find my screen there. There we go. Uh, and Tesla was a big helper today. They had earnings. You probably already saw it. We'll cover that in a little bit. The S&P, if you want to use really anything to look at, it's averaging 1% a day gain over the last six days. We'll take it, right? It's that's not normal, and that won't stay that way, but nearly a 9% gain over the last month, which includes all the volatility that you saw down in here. Um, we're seeing companies beating on earnings, but keep it in perspective. They're beating lowered expectations. So we all lowered what we thought was going to happen, and companies are just doing better. Had we not lowered, it would have been it would have looked like a bloodbath. So a little bit of help from the Wall Street analysts there. Um, also, it gives the companies a chance to lower guidance going forward and not get stung. You're noticing, well, maybe other than Snapchat, uh, you're noticing that companies are able to lower guidance, and we don't even seem to care, right? Because profit margin, profit growth is where everybody's looking right now. Uh, which is awesome. So that's helping a lot of stocks out there. It's uh, kind of setting us up, by, though, if you look at this closely, it's kind of setting us up for a late year 
earnings cycle that just looks amazing because we're bringing down estimates now. If we do just better there, then you're like, oh, crap. You know what I mean? That we did better. It looks like everything is better now. So a little bit of that there. Just thought I'd point out. Uh, all right. The NASDAQ. Let's go over to the. Oh, you can't even see the screen. Look at me go. Focus, Dustin. Focus. The NASDAQ here. You can use the Qs if you like. A lot of people like to use the QQQ if you don't have access to the futures market. It continues its monster pop back above the 50-day moving average today with about a 1.3, 1.4% gain. Again, Tesla played the big role in that today. Tesla is a dominant force in the NASDAQ. The S&P, I think it was your best performer in the NASDAQ, by the way. So uh, had Tesla not had such a good day today, you know, you probably wouldn't have seen the NASDAQ outpacing everything else. Yeah, Tesla was the best performer. Then you have semiconductors looking through there, right? Uh, you got ASM. Well, I'm going to point out also Pin Duo Duo because that reversed all of the other day's losses. Uh, and looking through, you got a lot of semiconductors and a lot of big cap type names. I should say large to sound normal, but I don't. Uh, you got Intuit in there as well, up 3%. Beaten down stocks even got a boost. Int uh, Intuit, I'm sorry. PayPal. Look at that move over the last couple days. Rather interesting there. Baidu. Come on, Baidu. There you go. Uh, Baidu with a decent day. It's been holding up better than the Chinese market overall, and they actually just came out with a cool automated car. It's pretty neat over there. Uh, all the Chinese stocks were higher. JD.com also in the role uh, of gainers here today as well. Um, on the downsides, largely earnings related when we're referring to the NASDAQ, so not too much going on there. Oil down. Well, we'll cover that here. Yeah, let's cover it. Look at this. You got oil. Uh, down today by 3%. Good job not falling for this. Remember we talked about this pullback in energy uh, about a week and a half ago? We're saying this is not a buy for a move to highs. You can spot that kind of thing. It teaches you to be a little bit quicker when you have to be. If you're not a stock picker or whatever, that's fine. But this is not a buy still that will take you back to all-time highs. You play it for the short pops. That's what you're getting. Those are tough. It's not for everybody because you have this type of volatility, right? You maybe didn't take a profit just yet and you go, oh, darn it, I gave it all back. That's okay. That's the kind of volatility that we've got going on there. If you missed it uh, and didn't participate, good job on your part for not falling for what is a tricky bounce to try to play. And that goes for any stock in that area there. You got ExxonMobil, some stronger than other others, but you got Chevron, Mo uh, Chevron Mobile and uh, what was a uh, Conoco Phillips. You know what I mean? Decent little bounces, quick profit taking type bounces. That's exactly what you see there. That will continue in oil and oil related stocks. We're coming. Well, we're about to come to the end of the summer there. Normal demand starts to bleed off a little bit. There's a lot of supply being ramped up little by little. Joe Biden didn't do a good job over there getting the Saudis to ramp up production beyond what they were already going to do anyways. Not that it's really his job to do that, but that's what he said he was going to do. And uh, so don't fall for it, right? Little, quick, short trades in there if you're going to do that. Um, what else do I got for you? Uh, gold. Gold. Hey, look at that. Gold, pretty quick drop in yields today. Actually helped gold out a little bit. If you look at the bonds, uh, higher prices means lower yields there. It's another view of maybe people believing the economy is not as a good a shape as possible. The stock market seems to think so, but it's looking forward. Yields are current. They're not forward looking. And uh, so that helped gold, which it really needed up 1%, a little overextended here in the short term. Uh, still, do, do you get excited about buying gold? I'm not sure that that's the answer here. Lastly, the Russell 2000 took the day off. It has been overperforming compared to the other indices there. Uh, just no big deal. Still gained a little bit on the day. Just wasn't anything spectacular to take a look at there. All right, let's take a look at the individual sectors. I'm going to do something fun with you here today. Here are the current sector weightings in the stock market. It is very clear to see that where tech goes, so goes the market. That's an easy way to say it there. XLK, just an ETF we use to look this up. Uh, that is the tech sector, currently makes up 27.7% of the S&P, right? So think of the dominance that that has today. Uh, Microsoft was higher. Apple was higher. Amazon, Tesla. You got NVIDIA and basically all the semiconductors in there. I pointed out into it. Adobe, Oracle, you name it. Those tech stocks making up 27%. That's enough to get the markets to move higher. Add to that that healthcare took yesterday off. Today it came back to play. You got Eli Lilly in there. Pfizer, Merck, United Healthcare, Abbott Labs, all good performers. Edward Life Sciences. So these two sectors today... 
What do you got? 27, 37, 40 points or 40 percentage points in the S&P. These two can move the market. And today was a great example of that. Uh, consumer discretionary at 11%. And then financials are the only other double digit area uh, sector of the stock market that's doing uh that, that has double digit you know percent gains there on the downside uh, you've got basic materials real estate and utilities these guys don't make up very much of the market energy thank goodness doesn't make up much of the market because it just fell like 30 percent out of nowhere still the best sector of the year we'll show in a second but it's only four percent of the market so that 30 percent drop off of highs see how it didn't have much of an impact that's uh, okay. Looking further here, if you want a quick update, uh, in the black on the far right over there, we have got the S&P current dividend yield. It's a day behind, but basically right there. If you were just by the S&P, you're looking at a 1.65% dividend paid out from all the companies, of course. Energy remains the best. It usually is the highest there with 3.49%. That's pulled back a little bit. A good chart that we could have prepared and maybe will at some point would be the change. Right, so energy coming off of like a 3.7% yield back down to 3.5. The only other 3% or higher yields are utilities and real estate. That is typical. Uh, down to the bottom of the list, I, I want to point out financials, by the way. 2.2, I mean, that's a little higher than normal there, just so you know. That, that's, that's probably in like the 70th percentile, maybe a little bit better. Consumer discretionary and communication services uh, down at the bottom under 1% and just something to look at if you're one of those that's a sector portfolio builder, but you want yield, now you know where to be and what to miss out on. And lastly, here's the year-to-date change so far by sector. Year-to-date, we're down about 16% in the S&P, a little bit better after today. Energy is the only one that is green. Remember, it was up oh, just about 60% year-to-date, so it's given back half of its gains. That's that looks tremendous, uh, but that's at 50% of where it was to start the year. Every other sector down on the year, consumer staples, uh, healthcare, and utilities are the only ones that have not lost double digits and are very close to turning positive, well, relative to everybody else, and now you can see that there. Hope that helps. That's a different way to look at it, huh? I don't know. Maybe. You like it? Let's try something different here. Financials. I'm getting this question a lot. Is it time to jump in financials? Oh my God, oh my God, rates are going higher. Higher net interest income, oh my gosh, the money that they bring in, they're still loaning out at higher rates, plus the money they're bringing in, they're able to earn more uh, higher rates relative to the spread of what they have to pay you. That's just a fancy way of saying the money they're holding that they're about to loan out, they're just gonna make more. Profit margins should ex extend a little bit. Now, if you look at financials, they've been showing signs of a bottom here. I, I guess that's why I'm getting the question so much there. 5% pop in five days there. Think forward about this though. We just had the bank stress tests, right? And most of the time when banks have their stress tests, they, they tend to increase their dividend a little bit there. Um, and they tend to buy back shares or at least announce higher buybacks, right? A lot of them didn't do that this time. Why? Because they, the Fed made them raise the minimum emergency reserves, kind of like your emergency fund that you have, right? They made them put more money off to the side in case things go wrong. That started back in 2008 when the banks almost took us all down. So the Fed said, you got to put more money in there. What happens? I just talked about this the other day. Well, if you have to put more money in your emergency fund, you have less money to go out and buy fancy drinks. You have less money to go out and buy a new car or buy a rental property or whatever, go on vacation, right? So it's the same thing in the corporate world. They needed to put more money in their emergency funds, which means they can't buy as, back as many shares. What does that mean for you? Well, when you look at the financials, stocks move higher when companies buy back shares. That's not a conspiracy theory, that's the truth. When there are less shares open to the public, you technically have a bigger stake in the company, right? Therefore, when earnings come out, EPS, earnings per share, there are less shares publicly out there, therefore earnings per share is higher. Stock moves higher, valuations move higher, right? So that's not happening this time. Buybacks are normal. Think about what happens going forward. They already have their emergency fund filled up for the year. So the next time stress tests come out next quarter and they go do this again, they won't have to put more money in their emergency reserves. They'll be buying back shares, right? But that's still a ways to go. So you don't have to rush to buy the financials right now because the, the, the tide is moving in your favor, but it's not quite there just yet, right? So no hurry in the financials and now you have a quick explanation as to why that may be. Was that too much? Was that uh, a little bit geeky there? That actually was just rattled. 
uh, off the top of my head because I thought about that and wanted to share that with you. See what we do? I'll try to teach you a little something there. There are your stocks in the news for the day. Uh, what you have there first up is United. So United. United comes out with earnings here. Uh, you know who they are, right? No big deal there. They report a weaker than expected earnings there. They said, we're going to be we're gonna be profitable for the full year. Don't worry about it. Remember, we've done this in the past. Every company has their own metric. Remember yesterday with CalMain, we talked about the dozens of the dozens of eggs sold, right? 272 million dozens of eggs sold. So that's one of their metrics. Available seat miles is what the airlines focus on. That was down for them. Uh, that made their load factor seem high. Remember, load factor is just the percentage of seats that are actually filled with passengers. So the available seats were lower, less flights, but the load factor was higher because the seats that were there were filled. So it was like, ooh, it looks like it's higher, but it was sort of misleading there. Uh, cargo was the big reason that they did miss on earnings there. It was one of the areas to blame there. The CEO says, we're going to see sequential improvement in Q3. Uh, sequential improvement in Q3. That was the words he chose to use. Um, nonetheless, if you look at uh, United Airlines today, what happened? They missed. They get stung a little bit, down 10% on the day, and that dragged down some of the other airlines as well. Uh, CSX, let's do that one. Ta-da! That's a railroad company. Typically very boring, but a very easy company to understand how they do things. They put stuff in train cars, they move it over there, they unload it from the train car. That's it. Fundamentally, it's not a hard company to try to understand. They beat earnings by 15%, revenue beat by 4%. All of that wording and percentages and stuff, just to say they had... Pricing power. That's what that means. Margins expanded. Margins grew. That's all they're looking for. That's what everybody's looking for this time here. Uh, we can prove this by looking at their total car loads. Total car loads. Total car loads were down. That should have hurt them, but pricing power was strong. Margins are bigger. We had to move less stuff into a container, then drag it down the road, then unload it. But we were able to charge more for doing that. We did less work and we made more money. That's the simple way to explain it to your kids if you're trying to teach them about this kind of stuff. Carnival Cruise, we won't spend long on. They, they're, they're raising more money. They're diluting you. Their stock was down 11% because they need a billion more dollars. You see in the background? See that volume there today? 143 million shares. That's them. There you go. They needed their money. All right, let's do it. Blackstone. Everybody likes to look at Blackstone here. This is kind of interesting, right? Stick with this one for a second. They're, they're the monster alternative asset manager out there, the, the behemoth and all that stuff. So we look at their AUM, similar how you would look up Jazz Wealth. You'd go, well, what's their AUM, their assets under management? And to be honest, nowadays people are doing assets under management. Then us and Blackstone and everybody, we do assets under advisement, right? So there's those two there. They added another $50 billion in assets. And to put that into very fair perspective, Jazz Wealth manages $250 million. And we think we're hot stuff. They added 50 billion more. Yikes, man. What a court. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, mostly the money, by the way, came from capital raises for real estate projects, right? They, people are expecting that's going to drop off a little bit. But in last quarter, that's what they did there. It's still very strong for them. Now, here's what happened. At raising, they brought in more money for real estate projects, right? The wealthy this is their words, not mine. The wealthy were putting money into long-term projects, long-term investments, long-term Blackstone funds, right? They saw the dip in the economy, the stock market, and they said, here you go. Let's invest in that. Did they run away from it like a lot of us do when we're, ooh, you know, my account went down $4,000. I'm nervous, right? No, they ran into it. They said, I want that discount. So everybody's always saying, I want to do what the wealthy do. There is public fact as to what the wealthy are doing. And anyone who's even kind of wealthy has some kind of account with the Blackstone Group. One way or another, whether they know it or not, they do. And that's what they're doing. Very, very cool. All right. Want to do what the rich do. There's your example there. What else do we got? Uh, oh, lastly, Report MacMoran. There you go. So there's a chart of them there. Uh, these guys are miners. They mostly mine copper. If you really look into what they do, they mostly mine copper, uh, but they do mine gold uh, occasionally when the, when the pricing is good. These guys have taken a different approach here. Copper prices have been crushed. I think CPER is a ticker symbol. That's a good one to look at. If you need to look it up as an ETF, that's a good one to look at there. Uh, that's the equivalent of being crushed, the price of something being crushed. They missed on earnings, but they said 
let's do something a little different here. We're going to make this up on volume. Copper, according to the CEO, he said this exactly. Get out of the way. He said copper is playing a significant role in this new founder vitalization of decarbonization technologies. We all want to, the, 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 what is it, the climate change, or it used to be global warming, that didn't work, change it to climate change, uh, EV cars, uh, fans, wind turbines, you know what I'm saying. All that stuff requires copper, and these guys happen to know how to get it. So they said, all right, copper prices are down. We know that's not going to stay like this. The world is moving towards this, whether you like it or not, this sort of climate change, uh, make everything better and healthier and stuff like that. So they said, we see tons of demand on the horizon. We're going to go for it. We're going to go get all that copper, be the dominant player when it's time for everybody to start drawing that copper for your batteries and all the stuff that you're doing. The cords that plug in your new EV you know, trains or planes or whatever they're working on. It's a long shot play, right? But they came out clean with it and they said, that's what we're doing. That makes sense for us. We're going to actually do that and take the shot that that's what's happening while copper prices are cheaper. That's pretty cool. I don't know. That's a, you know, it's a big bet on their part, but I thought it was pretty cool. All right, I'll let the stream catch up here and then take your questions. Uh, we've got Verizon, supposedly going to report tomorrow. Did they not already report? Uh, Twitter, uh, Snap After Hours, not doing too well. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs, Region Financials, we've got a good mix in there. American Express will be the focus because that's the biggest name. Everybody wants to look at that. Um, wow, it feels like deja vu. Like, I feel like everybody, like, you do this enough and you're like, didn't they already report? Did I not already see that? No, that was last quarter, I guess. Uh, and that'll take us through the week. Fridays, remember, are not very heavy for earnings reports. Just a trickle here and there. This is, in fact, one of the busiest Fridays coming out tomorrow. So, um, and then next week as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, insurers, Doc, yes, uh, insurers fall into the financial sector. Yep. You're right. So you would say the same, you would fall into the same category there. They have a different way of making interest income off of their premium uh, that they collect, but still, it's still better for them. Yeah. Unless we all start crashing more. Uh, Mr. Pelosi, congratulations to him again uh, for the excellent timing on something he knew nothing about. Very, very good for them. And did you see her response when she was asked the question? She just, that was it, meeting over, right? You work for us. You're supposed to answer our questions. And she said, that's it. We're done. Walking away. How that is not the main thing we're talking. I just, maybe because I'm into finance and I, I get fired up about that stuff. Maybe that's it. Nobody else cares. I don't know. Maybe it's got to be. Anyways, uh, AT&T had a rough day as well. Snap is having a rough after hours here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. 12 bucks. Headed for 10. That puts it under almost the entire range there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, a historical month. The uh, chart was spot on with July. So far, so good. Yeah. Being up, uh, being an up month there. Remind me what it said about August. We'll do it. I'll pull it back up again uh, so we can see it's not as good as July. I probably can't get back there fast enough. I save all these slides and just need to get better at categorizing them. Is that it? No. Uh, we'll come back and do August because I want to do the month, uh, the intra month as well. That's always fun to do. Intra month performance. Um, ah, I can't find it fast enough for you. I'm sorry. Is that it? Okay, one more. Nope. Sorry. We'll do it though. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's right. She did have that fancy refrigerator filled with ice cream. Now, that I don't disagree with. Lady, want to put a little ice cream in your fridge? That's cool. Actually, next week, uh, we're staying at a place. We'll be in Winston-Salem, if you want to come say hi. We're staying at the Graylin Estate. I don't know if you've ever seen the Graylin Estate. It's phenomenal. Really cool. Um, and they, it's not expensive. It's owned by Wake Forest. So it's like a normal thing. But every floor on the ho in, in the mansion has uh, ice cream vending. Free. It's all free, by the way, because the guy that built the house, I don't know to tell you the story, but he, uh, his family had an affinity for ice cream. Really cool. And that's the only reason I'm staying there. I like ice cream. I, I want to eat the ice cream. And it's free, so I can get wrecked on ice cream. I'm doing it. It's happening. Um, yeah. 
Okay, got you fired up. Everything's good. I'm gonna go get ready for Wine and Wealth because uh, I've got some cool stuff, man. I like sharing this stuff with clients and keeping you updated on all that. We'll go over that and uh, that'll be at eight o'clock here tonight. Grab a drink, come hang out with me. You know the drill, I will see you there. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening and uh, we will see you when we see you, huh?